Amen. We thank God for another day, another opportunity to come and be in the presence of his house, be in the presence of his word. There's something amazing that takes place when God's word goes forth. I liken it to those that are present. Thank you for coming in. Those that are listening by way of radio, those that may be connecting through some form of social media, those that may be listening through some modern form of television. I liken the word being taught and being in the atmosphere of the word teaching, it's kind of like sunbathing. Now, I don't sunbathe, but sunbathing, you really don't do anything. You're just in the presence of a radiating force. And, and, and you allow yourself to lay out. In such a way that you remove all of life's encumbrances and you allow the natural power of the sun to make a change upon your skin. Well, the word of God, it changes you. It's like being in the sun. I work in a manual environment. And sometimes the guys will be out there sandblasting outside. So old rusty car, they take a machine that allows them that has sand that comes out that removes the rust away. And sometimes they'll come in after a long day and they say, I got sunburn. They were not out there to suntan. They were not out there to be sunburned. But they were in the atmosphere of a radiating force. I want you to understand that if you're in the presence of this word today, if you're in the presence of God's word going forth, if you're in the presence of God's word being taught, it is a radiating force and change certainly takes place. I want you to journey with me uh, in a special place in the Bible, Mark chapter 1. Now we're going to look at verse 29. As you're going there and you have your Bibles in your hand, why don't you hold them up for me? And we'll do a declaration to make sure we're all on one accord. If you've got an electronic device that allows you to access the Word, you can do that as well. If you're at home and you have the Word near you, I ask you that you grab it, put it in your hand, so that we have a point of reference. This is my Bible. This is my Bible. I am what it says I am. I am what it says I am. I can do what it says I can do. I can do what it says I can do. I have what it says I have. I have what it says I have. Today. Today. I will be taught the word of God. I will be taught the word of God. The word, the word will change my heart. Will, change my heart. Will, renew my mind. will renew my mind. And will usher me into the place of my destiny. And will usher me into the place of my destiny. For the Bible says, the Bible says faith, faith cometh, cometh by, by hearing, hearing and hearing by, and hearing by the, word the word of God. Oh, you did an awesome job. Thank you so very much. Father God, we ask you to be the preacher, the teacher, the hearer. In thy son's name we certainly pray. Amen. Turn with me to the book of Mark. And there's something amazing that's going on here. In the book of Mark. And we're going to look at verse 29 through 34 for the lesson. And if you have a, a Bible with subtext, it may say something like, Jesus heals many people. Or it may say something like, Peter's mother-in-law is healed. Some, some depends on which subtitle they want to deal with. You'll find that this is recorded and supported in Matthew's Gospel. It is recorded and supported in Luke's Gospel. When we find that it is in Matthew, uh, Mark, and Luke, we, we find that we call that what? synoptic, that they are sharing a, a, a particular historical supernatural event that took place in the earth from different angles, different viewpoints, but they all are sharing that same story. And we'll find that these three individuals kind of write in somewhat of the same way and they tell stories, uh, the same stories from a different angle. And so this is a synoptic lesson to get a full of view. You may want to spend some time over there in Matthew. To get a full of view, you may want to spend some time over there in Luke. But I find this lesson fairly amazing. Now when we look at Mark's gospel, when you look at Mark's gospel, 
everything is straightway. Everything is immediately. Everything is suddenly. It's like bam, 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 bam. If, if there was a movie and we took all of the Gospels, Mark's movie would be action-packed. I mean, it would be starring, I don't know, Tom Cruise or uh, Eldris Elba or someone like that. I mean, really action-packed. Maybe the guy from the Black Panther. I can't think of his name at the present time. But this is a really action-packed storytelling. I mean, suddenly, immediately, then straightway. I mean, he goes bam, 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 bam. Really, really, really swift. I love Mark's gospel. Here we are in chapter 1. And here we are going into another amazing highlight. Now, prior to this, we dealt with, and we talked about this last week, we dealt with a person, an individual that had an unclean spirit. We talked about how this individual was in the synagogue. We talked that the Bible records that Jesus came and spoke with one having authority. He had a different type of doctrine. It was full of power. It was full of authority. And in that midst, he spoke change over the young man's life, and change took place. It was a supernatural change. It was a natural change that had a spiritual root, and so it was a holistic blessing upon the man's life. And then that that, that portion ended with them saying, who is this? He teaches a new doctrine. And we talked about doctrine. Doctrine was a set of confirmed beliefs that one ascribes to. But it says he spoke with such authority. So last week we talked about the power and the importance of declaring and decreeing a thing. And so I won't recap on that fully. We'll touch upon that a little bit today. And it says, as soon as they left the synagogue, that's 29, they went with James and John to the home of Simon and Andrew. As soon as they left the synagogue, they went with James and John to the home. I'm going to talk to you a little bit about what happens when the gospel goes home with you. What happens... When the gospel goes home with you. The text says, as soon as they left the synagogue, they went with James and John to the home of Simon and Andrew. 30, Simon's mother-in-law was in bed with a fever. And they immediately told Jesus about her. 31, so he went to her, took her hand and helped her up. The fever left her. And she began to serve them or to wait on them. Yeah, what happens if the church really went home? What would happen if the gospel? Now, the gospel is a message that says God has paved a way for us to be right with him. That's what the gospel is. The gospel message says that Jesus Christ is the Lord and Savior of the world. The gospel message says by grace we are saved, not by works, lest any man should boast. The gospel says I can be right in the eyes of God because of Jesus Christ. The, the gospel says righteousness is something that we put on, not something that we do. The gospel says through the cross and him crucified and the resurrected Christ that I have the opportunity to be a new creature. The gospel says that if I confess with my mouth and believe deep in my heart that Jesus is Lord and Savior, I shall be saved. The gospel says that once I accept Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior, I have one, a deposit of the perpetual dwelling of the Holy Spirit in my life. And two, I have the assurance of everlasting life. That is, that is what we mean by the gospel. 